Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Taylor Finger. I'm the Migratory Game Bird Specialist with the Wisconsin DNR. And today on this Facebook Live, we are going to be providing the migratory bird season proposals for the 2019 uh, hunting seasons. So what I'm going to be going through today is a slide of information in terms of biological justification for what we do, as well as our public input and our surveys that we conduct on an annual basis to help us make these decisions. And once we get through all of this, I'm going to really ask everybody out there to take the time and provide public input. We have created a new online tool that is posted on our webpage and will be posted as part of uh, this Facebook Live event for people to much easier provide that public input in a uh, survey tool. So we'll go forward here. I just want to really promote our waterfall webpage. I, uh, I can't overstate how much our waterfall webpage has improved over the past year and a half. There is a lot of information that is readily available for our waterfall hunters as well as our waterfall enthusiasts. Whether it's survey information in terms of spring waterfall surveys, our midwinter waterfall surveys, our fall flight counts, um, as well as a new addition that we made uh, this year in 20 or last year in 2018 is the hunting season. We conducted a notes from the field, which basically tasked 20 plus waterfall uh, centric biologists across the state to give us information in terms of when's peak migration occurring, when are birds uh, moving into the area, what are the types of birds that are used in the area, what about wetland food, what about their availability, and we asked them on a bi-weekly basis to provide that information so we could post it for our waterfowl hunters, again, to try and provide as much information as we could on a statewide scale of what hunting season looked like last year. So again, I, I can't state how much information is available on our waterfowl webpage by going to you know, the Wisconsin DNR page and typing in waterfowl in the key box. So I also want to promote that we have a lot of information DNR-wide in terms of our Wild Wisconsin podcast. We, uh, the Migratory Bird Program, we did an off-the-record podcast um, just talking about what the Migratory Bird Program does and who myself and our, my assistant are in terms of people and what we all do to try and support this opportunity for hunters. Um, as an update, the Wisconsin Waterfowl Management Plan, this uh, is something that um, every 10 years we've been updating this plan and we are right now for the last year and a half I've been going through the process to update how we're going to manage waterfowl in the state of Wisconsin for the next decade. And so we had a group of 20 plus conservation uh, organizations, myself, biologists, law enforcement get together and sit down and develop a plan on what we want to do. And this plan will be going out for public comment over the next several months. So I will be posting that on our webpage and I encourage you to take that opportunity to take a look at it, see what our objectives are, see what our strategies are, and provide a comment to uh, myself just by sending me an email, giving me a call, and letting us know what we need to be doing. So public input, we're going to get now kind of into the meat of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, in terms of providing public input on the um, waterfowl season proposals, so again I want to step back a little bit and say that these proposals are developed with um, input from hunters, with um, with input from hunters, with uh, information from our Wildlife Federation, our Conservation Congress. We have this information that we have been collecting over the past several months and what we do is then we synthesize that input and we put it all together and then come up with a department proposal and then take that out for public meetings. So what we're going to be doing then is then providing you and on our webpage what that public input is or our public proposals are and asking for that input. So we have multiple meetings coming up over the next week and a half. Um, the first one will be at the Wisconsin Waterfowl Hunters Conference, which is this Saturday coming up at the Hotel Meet in Wisconsin Rapids. There will be several breakout sessions where I will be providing information to hunters and asking them for input on things as far from the hunting seasons for next year as well as our waterfowl uh, management plan. But for the actual public official hearings in terms of providing input, that will start March 11th, so next Monday I will be in La Crosse. Next Tuesday I will be in Rice Lake. Next Wednesday I'll be in Appleton and next Thursday I'll be in Pewaukee. And this information will be posted on our webpage in terms of all of our proposals for the addresses and all of that information. So again, please take a chance to visit our webpage and find this information. But we will be holding meetings at 7 o'clock at all these locations next week. And uh, again, I can't emphasize how much, how important it is to, whether if you can't make it to these meetings, at least providing public input. Because I can only set the seasons based on the information that I hear. 
And on an annual basis, we have roughly 75 to 80,000 waterfowl hunters. If I hear from 500 of you, that's a really good year. When you think about it in terms of percentages, there's a lot of duck hunters out there, a lot of goose hunters out there that aren't saying a whole lot. So please take this opportunity to provide input on our season proposals. So with regard to uh, federal regulations and the timeline on this, because of the government shutdown, there's kind of been a slowing in how these have been uh, handled in the past. We should have had the federal uh, frameworks by now. However, we don't. It's not looking like we'll have the actual final frameworks until sometime in May, but we are gonna be going through this process because we don't believe that there is gonna be any changes in terms of federal changes with regard to season length or bag limits. So again, as I said, the Public input meetings will be next week, March 11th through the 14th. The final date for providing public input will be Friday, March 15th. And I will be taking all of that information and synthesizing it and putting it together in terms of a final proposal to the Natural Resources Board on April 10th. So just to give you guys some idea of how these seasons, uh, how these seasons get set and what conditions are looking like, in the past, the seasons have been set um, with current year data. However, over the past three or four years, that decision was made that the hunting seasons for 2019 will be based on 2018 conditions in terms of wetland and as well as breeding numbers. But when we take a look at how conditions are looking out right now in terms of conditions on the U.S. and Canadian prairies as well as Wisconsin, this is actually really good compared to what we've been seeing over the past five years. It's been extremely wet in the Canadian prairies um, as well as Wisconsin. If you, I mean, we had a lot of rain last fall and we've got a lot of snowpack. So it looks like conditions in terms of breeding and brood rearing habitat is gonna be really good in this upcoming year. So we expect to see a pretty solid fall flight. Just to give everybody kind of an idea of what we shoot in Wisconsin and how that breaks down, um, from 19, or from 2000, or 1999 to 2007, our harvest consisted of about 39% mallards, 17% wood ducks, 10% green wing teal, and 10% blue wing teal. So those four species made up 75% of our harvest. If we fast forward to the next decade, it's kind of changed. Our mallard harvest has gone from 39 to 32%, and our wood duck has gone from 17% up to 22%. But if you recall that during that time period, we increased the wood duck bag limit to three birds a day during that time period, so I'm not surprised to see that our harvest has gone up. Our green wing and blue wing teal harvest has gone down over that time period, but we've seen it made up in terms of diving duck and sea duck percentages because that continues to be a growing opportunity on Green Bay and Lake Michigan. Just to give everyone um, some information in terms of mallards, Wisconsin has been typically conservative in terms of our uh, hen mallard bag limit, and that's based on information that we have uh, received in multiple studies over the past 30 or 40 years, showing that of the mallards harvested in Wisconsin, 70% of them come from Wisconsin. And I think it's important to recognize that there is a potential that we could have an impact on our own birds with our hunting regulations. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest that, but we need to at least be looking at new and innovative research ideas to evaluate whether or not that's occurring. But in terms of mallards, it's important to recognize that we have had a shift in terms of mallard populations over the past 10 years compared to the prior 10 years. Our breeding population from 1998 to 2008 on average was 270,000 mallards. Fast forward another decade and that's dropped to 183,000 mallards. So that's an 85 to 90,000 bird a year drop in terms of our mallards. So that's why we have consistently been a little bit more restrictive in terms of our hen mallard bag limit. And we don't know if it's hunting driven. We also know during that time period that we've lost a lot of grassland that used to be in CRP, which would affect nesting uh, success. So with regard to all of that, we continue to suggest that we remain restrictive in terms of, or conservative in terms of our hen mallard bag limit. Um, and which has been won. And when we've made that uh, proposal in the past, when we ask our hunters whether or not they support it, generally they have in terms of our hunter survey in 2015, over 70% of people said either have a one or a zero hen mallard bag limit. And then last year when we asked it, only 17% of respondents in our surveys said that it negatively impacted their hunting season. So um, with some season information that we'll go into here with regard to some of the other migratory bird species, uh, for morning doves, we have a pretty robust banding um, plant or process for morning doves. 819 were banded last year. The population continentally seems to be a 
pretty stable. So we're expecting out of harvest prescription of 15 birds a day for a 90 day season. And in the past, that's been September 1 through November 29th. Um, Wisconsin doesn't have a huge culture yet of uh, migratory bird hunt, or I mean, of morning dove hunters. We have 10 to 15,000 morning dove hunters that harvest 50,000 morning doves a year. Comparatively, Alabama on average shoots half a million morning doves. So just put it into perspective of where we are compared to states that have had this opportunity for decades. With regard to woodcock, um, in terms of our eastern and central management units, we've seen a decline in their population. However, in Wisconsin over the past 10 years, we haven't seen any real trend in terms of increasing or decreasing. Wisconsin is, however, the second, um, the second highest harvest state, as well as number of hunters. We're a distant second to Michigan, where there's a lot more uh, opportunity in terms of uh, birds in Michigan. But from those folks, I would like to hear from people that do hunt woodcock because if I hear from three or four hunters a year on woodcock, despite being the second most, uh, the second greatest state in terms of this, we, we just don't hear from you guys. So if you do have some input you would like to provide, please do so. So with regard to Canada goose management, if you guys recall, last year was the first year that we bumped up the bag limit from two Canada geese a day to three Canada geese a day to be more consistent with our uh, all of the other states around us within the Mississippi Flyway. And kind of our justification behind that was in Wisconsin, we've seen after a long-term increase, we've seen the, basically a leveling out, if not a slight increase, just with our giant temperate Canada geese in Wisconsin. And if you look in terms of a uh, flyway level, in terms of giant population, we, set, we keep setting records almost annually in terms of that population continuing to grow. But it's important to recognize that historically Wisconsin has drawn on Canada geese that migrate from Northern Ontario and they used to make up a substantial proportion of our harvest. However, we've kind of seen that change in regard to harvest derivations. In 1996, 80% of the Canada geese we shot in Wisconsin came from Northern Ontario and only 20% came from our local giants. In 2006, that shifted to 60% from Ontario Giants and 40% are local birds. And as of 2017, we're actually shooting now 55% local Giants compared to 45% of those interior nesting Ontario migrants. So we've shifted to utilizing our local Canada geese at a higher level than we have for Ontario. And that was kind of the justification behind being willing to increase our Canada goose bag limit two, three, and not feeling like we're going to be. Uh, dropping that Ontario population. So I'm going to get into the migratory bird season proposals. As I said, we'll kind of walk through them here. I'll give you some information in terms of what our surveys have said and what we've heard from other organizations. And I have posted these migratory bird season proposals on our webpage. They're right at the top. You can click on it. And there's also, again, I'll touch on it a little bit later, is there's an online input tool that walks you through all of these proposals and allows you to check a box or click on whatever you want or ask them any questions that you'd like. And I will be synthesizing everything that we get. So as I said, please provide input. This is what we use to set our season structures. So with regard to the early teal season, um, over the past five years, we've had a seven day early teal season. However, this year we are proposing an increase in the teal season to nine days. What this does is it utilizes another weekend, and the first weekend is a holiday weekend in terms of Labor Day, so there's potentially at least five days where people could have off from work to take advantage of this early teal season. Our early goose season is September 1, or we're proposing a September 1 through September 15th, and traditionally this had just been a Canada goose season with five birds a day for that season. However, we realized that we weren't utilizing all the opportunity with regard to snow geese. Um, we are allowed to have a 107 day snow goose season and we are going to add those 15 days during the early season to get to that 107 because we did hear from hunters last year that there were a handful of snow geese around in the first and second week of September and there's no reason why we couldn't use that. Um, our youth waterfall season would be the weekend of September 14th and 15th is what we're proposing. Uh, morning dub, as I said, a 90 day season starting on September 1 and going through November 29th and proposing a woodcock season of September 21st through November 4th. So now we'll get into the other season structures. Bag limits for the regular hunting season, the 60 day season. And I'm going to touch on it because I, this is something that I hear quite a bit is how come we have a 60 day season compared to uh, states and other flyways. 
and that is set per federal regulation. All the states within the Mississippi Flyway have a 60-day season, and that is because of the other four flyways, our Mississippi Flyway has 50% of all the hunters. So we provide a lot more pressure on all the birds that come through this area. So we have a short season compared to the Pacific Flyway, which has a 107 day season, but they have relatively few number of hunters out there. The Central Flyway has a lot of ducks, but they have less hunters than we have in our Mississippi Flyway. So again, just kind of touching base on that. But with regard to our bag limits, um, this is the 23rd year in a row we've had a 60 day, six bird a day liberal season. Um, Four mallards, of which the feds allow us to have one head mallard, but based on the information that we've collected and the research and the science, we are pr proposing to stick with a one head mallard bag. Uh, three wood ducks, we are proposing this year to bump the black duck bag limit to two rather than one. And again, that was based on you know information we were looking at whether or not we could. We knew black black ducks, we harvest about a thousand a year in Wisconsin, so by increasing that bag limit, we know we're not gonna have a harvest increase on black ducks, but there was some concern in terms of hen mallard identification issues for hunters, and based on the conversations I've had with other states and law enforcement folks, it didn't seem to be a real concern. Two redheads, three scoff, the pintail population at a federal level dropped to a point where we had to reduce the pintail bag limit to one. Um, and the canvas back bag limit will be two. We're also looking at five mergansers, not more than two of them may be hooded. And for those of you that like to go out there and hit the coot, you're allowed 15 a day. So with regard to, now we'll get into the zone structures for the duck season. Um, the proposed season structure for the north zone was, is going to be September 28th and a straight 60 day season through November 26th. And it's interesting, this has been, uh, over the last couple of years, this has been really public input driven because all of our hunter surveys over the past 15 years has said that the North Zone likes to start as early as possible and continue for the straight 60 days. But our public input over the past three years has shifted towards interest in the North Zone starting a week later. And in 2018, that public input that we received was over 70% in favor of the North Zone starting a week later. So based on what we saw last year in terms of the statewide opener, what we heard from hunters and what our conservation groups told us, we are again gonna propose a September 28th season opener. For the South Zone, this, is, uh, this has been again something that we have done now uh, consistently for many years. This season structure really hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, basically starting on the Saturday nearest October 1st, which is September 28th, and on our hunter survey, that shows that that's the most preferred option. However, there is interest in terms of starting earlier as well as starting later. And that's why we have proposed a five day split in the South Zone for quite some time to get people an early opportunity as well as pushing the season a little bit later for those that want to take advantage of those late season opportunities. So that is what we are going to propose again for this year. So the Mississippi River Zone, if you guys recall, this is a relatively new zone. We've had it since 2011. And we've had some different season structures over that time period and we're looking at uh, changing that again this year as well. Um, starting the season on the Saturday nearest October 1st, so that would be September 28th. So if you guys are tracking, that is a statewide opener for all three zones. However, the information that we received this spring and from the input that we received from hunters after the season last year is that there is interest to make a split longer in the Mississippi River to take advantage of some of those late uh, opportunities when the ice has not completely locked up the Mississippi River. So the structure that we are proposing is September 28th and closing October 6th, which is similar to the South Zone, and closing it for 12 days and then reopening on October 19th and running through December 8th. So again, I want to emphasize in terms of everything I'm talking about today that these are proposals. If you guys feel that we missed the mark or we're way off, don't hesitate to let us know. Please that's how we make these informed decisions. So with our regular goose season um, options here, I, we're gonna be looking at another 92 day season. We're allowed 107 days by federal law. That's what we're allowed in terms of a hunting season. We can't go outside those bounds. So we take 15 for the early Canada goose season and 92 for the regular Canada goose season. And um, this is what we're looking at. The North Zone, pretty consistent with what we've done for a long time. Is a, September 16th, straight 92 days for December 16th. For the South Zone, last year was the first year we utilized the option of using two splits. We've never done that before, but 
We tried it last year in terms of splitting it twice to get people to extend the season to the holidays. Basically, we know that 95% of all of the harvest of Canada geese in Wisconsin has occurred before November 30th. So if we take days in late December or early December, move them to late December, it's not going to have any population level, but it seemed to provide some additional opportunity for folks that were around for Christmas, New Year's, kids had it off from college or coming home. So we heard a lot of good reviews on that last year, so we are going to propose it again this year. A September 16th through October 6th, split with the duck season, open up October 12th, and then run through the end of the duck season, which is December 1st, close through December 14th, and then open up on a weekend and back all the way through uh, the New Year's holidays. The Mississippi River Zone, um, what we are going to be looking at is September 28th through October 6th. It's going to be a 12-day split, again with the duck season, opening up October 19th and running through January 9th. If you guys recall, um, last year was the first year we eliminated the Horicon Zone, and we again heard nothing but rave reviews there, and that was a scientific-based information that we chose to eliminate the Horicon Zone because we know that we're not getting the same percentage of Ontario migrants through the state. So, as I said, here's just an example of what that online input tool is going to be. We basically ask you to provide your name, your phone number, and your email. No different than if you were going to send me an email. Those would be the information that I would have from you. And it walks you through checking boxes saying how many days would you like the teal season to be. Zero, seven, nine, twelve, sixteen days. And you get to choose that. You see what our proposal is. And I really would like to see um, how folks react to this. If you think it's a great idea, use the tool, put in the comment section, hey, that this is awesome. Because what we were finding before is just not a whole lot of people wanted to reach out via email or sending a letter or giving me a call. So I think that this will be much more user friendly for our, for our hunters out there. So um, just a final kind of touch, that was what I had in terms of proposals in 20. 20, I will have to submit our recommendations for zones and splits options to go into effect in 2021. So that means that this summer I'm going to begin the process of evaluating our harvest, how zones look, north, south, Mississippi River, what our options are per federal regulations. And what those options are from the Fish and Wildlife Service is four zones with no splits, three zones with one split, two zones with one split, and one zone with two splits. So that's kind of what we have to work with in terms of what the Fish and Wildlife Service are allowing us to do. And as I said, we'll begin this process. We'll be taking public input. We're gonna be doing a hunter survey again in the winter of 2019. So just after the duck season for this year. And uh, if you guys have thoughts, what you'd like to see the zone structure be moving into the future, please let us know because I mean, we'll, we'll be, we're not going to collect a ton of information on it at this public meeting. We'd like to hear about it, but next year is when we're going to really be targeting looking for that input. So again, I just want to follow up with everything that we've provided. I have provided the proposals for the 2019 migratory bird seasons, and here are the opportunities. You can give me a phone call. You can ask the questions in, our, in the Facebook Live if you have any questions there that you'd like us to answer. You can uh, send me an email. We have the online input tool, and there are at least four meetings that are going to be happening over the next week and a half that if you would like to, I, I provide a bunch of biological information, a lot of this similar information that I can give to all of you and then answer your questions in the room at a public hearing. And you can hear what other hunters are thinking as well because we, we like to think we and what we want and what you want is exactly the same. But when you get everyone in the room, not everybody thinks the same. So again, give you the opportunity. I will be uh, at Mead Waterfall or Mead uh, Hotel in Wisconsin Rapids on Saturday, La Crosse on Monday, Rice Lake on Tuesday, Appleton on Wednesday, and Pewaukee on Thursday. And for the folks that have gone to the Appleton meeting in the past, we changed the venue this year because it was standing room only the last couple of years. So we will be at the uh, Fox Valley Technical College at the DJ Wardini Center. So again, thank you. I would. Uh, I appreciate you all listening and I can't state enough that last year we used Facebook Live for the first time and we increased our public input by nearly 400% and which is awesome but recognize that that equated to 750 comments out of over 70,000 waterfowl hunters. So please tell anybody that you know, 
that has interest in waterfowl hunting and wants to see something, whether it's what we propose or something different, visit our webpage, use the online tool, give me a call, send me an email, or show up at the meetings. So again, thank you. Hopefully I'll see you in the next couple weeks. If not, I'll see you this fall out in March.